Hi guys, welcome back to Jus de Rose. Today's video is about which fragrances are worth getting and which are worth forgetting about putting in the trash. First up, we have Diptyque L'eau Papier. This perfume is all about musk, a soft cocooning musky scent, and it has the most beautiful rice notes, like a powdery rice note that's reminiscent of steamed rice. There's also mimosa that contributes to the powderiness of the perfume and a nutty, almost toasted sesame seed note as well, which makes this fragrance super nice and a different no fragrance fragrance. So playing on that clean and fresh smelling perfume trend that a lot of people love. For me, this is a solid new release from Diptyque. I really enjoyed it. I wore it almost every day during my trip in Japan. So for me, this is a 10 out of 10 new fragrance release. Electric Sky by Tory Burch. Now this perfume is part of a wider collection called the Essence of Dream Collection. And it's been out for a year or so in the US, but has recently launched in the UK, which is hugely exciting. There is another fragrance that I really enjoyed uh, called Celestial woods but then after that electric sky was my favorite from the collection now this perfume is a fresh ozonic really cooling summer scent to me this smells like cold pressed cucumber juice so that like really cooling and refreshing feeling or you can even think of it as like slicing some cucumbers sprinkling some salt on top this is what I get from this scent even though these notes are not listed. And for those of you who are interested in the notes, you have lavender, clary sage, cactus flower, and woods. Now this perfume does remind me of a fragrance by Jo Malone, which is wood sage and sea salt. So if you have wood sage and sea salt in your collection, you don't need to add electric sky. The one thing I will say about this fragrance and the collection in general is that they're softer fragrances that don't project like crazy. So if you want a really strong perfume, that you can smell all day, this collection isn't gonna be for you. As for me, I'm gonna rank it within the all right category because I already have wood sage and sea salt, so it's not a fragrance that is groundbreaking per se, but it is still nice and I will definitely be reaching out for it in the summer. Ingenious Ginger by Goldfield and Banks. The latest release from the brand, and I can tell you this is a pretty good fragrance right off the bat. This perfume, is the love child between Nishane's Ani, this really warm, green, unusual vanilla, with Suspiro's Vibrato, which is this really fresh, citrusy, fiery ginger. This is what Ingenious Ginger is about. In fact, I have both Suspiro Vibrato and also uh, Ani's Nishane. Nishane's Ani. And I layered the two fragrances together and I do get a very similar vibe to Ingenious Ginger, which I'm all up for. It really, really works. A candied ginger that's fresh, fiery, blended with a juicy orange note, as well as sandalwood, vanilla, and amber. The only issue that I have with this scent is that I wish it projected a little bit more, but it does stay on the skin. Otherwise, it is a great ginger scent, and I would recommend it to you if you're looking for something that is addictive, sweet, but also has that fiery kick. Spring Flower by Creed. Now, this isn't a new perfume per se, but it is a relaunch. Now, as far as I'm concerned, the formulation hasn't been tweaked. It's really all about the packaging. This is now a baby millennial pink, which is really adorable. As far as the fragrance goes, personally, I think it smells outdated. It is a floral musky scent. That's nice, but it doesn't live up to the upgrade in packaging, which is a real shame. I'm gonna say goodbye to receiving PR from Creed ever again, but the point is I want to bring to you the most honest opinions for 220 pounds. I don't think this is worth it. So for me, this perfume is a pass. Gucci Bloom Intense. This, 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 this is outstanding. Oh my goodness. This is better, in my opinion, than the original Gucci Bloom. It is sweeter, it isn't as powdery, super modern, and even more addictive. A candied tuberose jasmine bouquet drizzled with coconut milk. I mean, 
Does it get better than that? <laughs> I wonder. Though don't expect a fragrance that has beach-like vibes. It's more of a touch of exoticism, you know, just a little, little touch to render this perfume, you know, even more addictive and interesting. There are also some fruity notes with pear and this mandarin. So overall it's fresh, fruity, jasmine-y, and just so delicious. Not the most long lasting fragrance yet again. <laughs> I get around five hours of wear, but the scent is so addictive then I'm gonna put it as a 10 out of 10 must-have. Next up is Chloe Nomad Jasmin Naturel Intense. So I have the original Eau de Parfum Naturel, which is a beautiful fruity jasmine, has some solar bomber, bomber, balmy qualities and you will find something that is very similar in this new intense version. To be frank, side to side initially there isn't that much of a difference other than the price tag which is higher on this one versus the other one but as it dries down this new version tends to be a little bit fruitier in the way of a mirabelle plum compote with like little bits of the fruit in it so it's quite sweet and plummy versus the other version, which feels fresher and more focusing on the jasmine, ironically, because this perfume has jasmine in its name. In terms of performance, this one doesn't last as long as the Eau de Parfum, which is a little bit frustrating for an intense version, and especially if you're paying more of a premium for it. So given that it isn't crazy different and it doesn't last, I'm gonna have to say this perfume is a pass. Go with the original Chloé Eau de Parfum Naturel. Vesper Glitz by Ex Nihilo. This perfume smells beautiful, like, Incredible. Ylang Ylang, white florals, vanilla. It smells so beautiful and I wanna bathe in it. However, however, there's a caveat to this. I have smelled this before. It sort of reminds me of a designer fragrance with the likes of My Way, Prada Paradox, Voce Viva, those sweet white florals that are very trendy at the moment. I'm a little bit disappointed in Ex Nihilo, you know? I thought they would go a little bit against the trends and like bring out something new, but they totally bought into it. I cannot come to terms with spending the money on this. If this perfume hadn't been gifted to me, I wouldn't have spent my own money on this. And so I can't recommend you to spend your own money on it. It's really up to you. Either you fall in love with the fragrance and you're like, okay, I'm getting it. But personally, I would put this fragrance in the all right category because there are other options out there that are much more affordable and give out the same effect. Lust for Sun by Juliet Has a Gun. This is definitely a sunny perfume, a fragrance that you wanna wear on a hot summer day, but don't be fooled with the ingredients that are listed because they're a little bit misleading to what the overall effect of the fragrance is. I certainly was a little bit taken aback initially, but the more I wore it, the more I loved it, and this is another one that I'm taking on holiday with me. So Lust for Sun has notes of ylang ylang, gardenia, jasmine, coconut, and also some musk, so you would think this is a fragrance that will transport you to the beach immediately. It's not the case. It's more about fresh, dewy, petal white florals with a clean, musky base. So don't think you'll be transported to the beach. This is more you are in a garden surrounded by jasmine and beautiful white florals. You may like it, you may not like it. I personally really enjoy it. So this is going into the pretty good category. It's long lasting and projects really well. Kayali Yum Pistachio Gelato 33. This is a fresh take on a pistachio scent. It is sweet for sure and it reminds me of those huge desserts that you would get like, I don't know, like a sundae or something with cotton candy, some pistachio lucum, some vanilla ice cream. So it's really sweet and creamy and indulgent and will literally add 500 calories to your day. Essentially a delectable dessert. The more I smell this, the more it makes me think of Pink Sugar by Aquilina, a cotton candy, really, really sweet fragrance mixed with a creamy, fresh pistachio note. I like the fact that it is fresher as opposed to overly sweet, which makes it easily wearable for the summertime. So if you're looking for a unique smelling gourmand scent for the summer, I would recommend you try this one. For me, this is a pretty good fragrance and a great release from Kaoli. I have the brand new Onabati 
Beauty Eau de Parfum from Diptyque. So this used to be a Middle Eastern exclusive, but now is available much more easily. And this perfume is a vegetal, really green, natural smelling scent. I mean, you can tell from my expression, this isn't my thing. I mean, I don't like this scent. I think it's disgusting, but for the sake of this video, I will still review it. You're welcome. Herbal green. This has a bright citrus opening with bergamot. There's immortel, petit grain, cedar, and amber. I don't like any of these notes, so this is why this perfume isn't for me, and it's going to be a pass. But if you are looking for a fragrance that evokes nature and lush vegetation, then this might be for you. Next up, we have Island Lush by Goldfield and Banks. And this is the newest addition to the botanical series, which have this beautiful golden bottle packaging. It's so stunning. And this fragrance focuses on South Pacific sandalwood and Australian sandalwood. That being said, it's more of a leathery perfume and it's done in the most stunning, beautifully elegant way. This is such a sophisticated leather, completely unisex. I don't really see the correlation between the name Island Lush. I was expecting more of a tropical fragrance. So a powdery, leathery scent. There is a hint of an exotic fruity note, perhaps Fig. There's definitely something that makes it feel special. You also have some iris to contribute to that sophistication and additional powdery facet. This is a 10 out of 10 must have fragrance, especially if you love leathery perfumes. Ouz Maracuja by Maison Crivelli. This is the newest fragrance to add to the Extrait de Parfum collection. So a collection of fragrances that has a higher concentration of perfume oil. And this perfume is an outstanding oud scent. 10 out of 10 new release. A fruity oud, but wait for it. It's a mix of passion fruit and oud. So it has a really unusual tropical twist, exotic twist that, I mean, who would have thought to mix passion fruit with oud? I mean, that's so original and I love that about this perfume. It does feel leathery as well. So that really pulls through from the oud. There's also some rose, some saffron, a juicy, tangy, sour, bright passion fruit with a leathery oud. This is one that dramatically, dramatically smells different on people. On me, unfortunately, it's the leather that pulls out more on my skin, which I'm devastated about because this is such a nice scent, but I don't like the fact that it's too leathery on me. But then on others, it's the delicious, fruity tankiness of passion fruit that comes out. So as I said, test it on your skin, see which direction it falls under. Uh, but yeah, this is a solid new release from Maison Crivelli and I would highly recommend it if you want an original oud. The final fragrance is another unique leather perfume. It is called Stallion Leather by Carolina Herrera. Now this is part of the private collection, so the more premium offering from Carolina Herrera and it doesn't disappoint. It has notes of jasmine and osmanthus, and osmanthus can impart leathery notes, so contributing to the overall leathery feel of this fragrance, but it also has a fruity apricot note that is very prominent in this scent. Imagine you are horseback riding in the countryside, you're taking a little break for lunch, and you're eating apricots, like overly ripe apricots. You can smell the leather, the horses in the background. That is what this fragrance is about. You do need to enjoy leathery fragrances to pull off this scent, and I would recommend it to you if you want a new take on leather, because we've seen the fruity raspberry to leather combo over and over and over again. And with the apricot notes, that is something that's different and still super appealing and attractive. So I'm putting this one in the pretty good category. And that concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments down below if you've tried any of these fragrances. I would love to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.